Good. You know, I think there's obviously there's some positives, and um, Oops, sorry. Coach Kelly's given us a lot of uh, really interesting looks that we can coach off of, which is good stuff that's unique. Um, but I think it's been it's been going well. The guys are growing every day, and you know, it, you have a, a veteran like Cody Simon helps kind of set the pace for the room with the way he prepares and how. Um, good he is with attention to detail, so I think, I think it's been a good start. Have you got to see, watch on Saturday, you know, that's just one day, it seemed like Sonny and CJ were doing a lot of good stuff coming up, causing a lot of difficulty for the offense. Is that just what the day was, or is there a little bit more to this Woods package than maybe there has been in the last year or two? Well, I think, you know, it, it's, we had, we had a lot of, you know, pressures in last year as well. We didn't really need to maybe use them as much as the year before. Um, but we wrap them in practice, and I think it's something that, you know, when you're going to be aggressive on defense, you know, a lot of times in spring you're always trying new stuff out and fine-tuning the stuff that you did the year before and all that. So we have some very talented athletes that can, that can blitz. You know, that's one of CJ's strong suits. Sonny's gotten, on the goal line. Sonny's gotten much better at blitzing this spring. And so I think you just got to try to utilize what you guys do well. Better how? Just like timing and things? Like what, what goes into it? Timing, I mean, I think a lot of it is just confidence, you know. Um, like for Sonny, it's just let, just telling them, like, don't don't think. You know, when you're gone, you just got to make something happen. You can't really think too much about it. You have that kind of athleticism, him, CJ, uh, Arvell, he's got to go, you know. Uh, I think sometimes you try to be so perfect with what the move is. When you just, when you just go with speed and let your natural athleticism take over, then you're deadly. Hey, Coach, can you just get up the mic for me just yeah. a little bit? Thank you. Is that sort of working the safety out of him a little bit, James? Or is it yeah, not I, that I think, simple? I think Sonny's made a really smooth transition to linebacker. You know, the early the early, um, the early, early days you had to work on, Luke Fickley used to say this to us all the time. He'd say, be slow until it's time to be fast in the box. And what that means is you have to have calm feet. You know, and he's so used to breaking and going from safety, you had to slow him down. He's so explosive. And so he's really gotten his footwork under control. It's a never-ending process. Um, but he, for a guy that, that played, and look, I think playing at safety, seeing the game from that perspective now moving up, he has a good idea of the whole scheme and how everything kind of works together. So it's been a really smooth transition for Sonny. How much, do you, how much better do you feel about C.J. Hicks now more than halfway through this spring? than maybe you did a month ago. I mean, what, what, is he, what has he shown you? Do you see stuff there that's going to translate into playing more in the fall? I think so. I think C.J. Hicks has done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, you got to keep you got to keep pressing him and making sure that he's really tapping into everything that he can offer. You know, I, I think C.J. sees the opportunity. Um, and he's, you know, certainly making a case to, to uh, get on the field this fall. You know, so I think it's been a, a really good spring for C.J., um, there's just always, you know, whenever you have a good day, you got to follow it up by another good day, you know, and kind of stack days. And I think that's what a pro does. You know what I mean? Like there, there's always, if you want to be a pro, you got to keep stacking them. That's the expectation. And I think, you know, he's had some really good days, and then he's had some days where you're like, you're trying to push him a little bit. But I think, I think CJ, where he is now compared to where he was last fall, is uh, he's a lot better football player. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think Coach Day's talked about it a lot, right? It's going to be a long season. And so I think we need to have – I've always been of the opinion if you have two guys, you have two guys, and you ride with them, right? If you have six, you have six, and that's a blessing. So I'd say right now we're probably at five uh, that I would feel confident rotating out there on the field. Um, and, look, I, I'm old school, right? So I come from the era – I used to yell at Luke Fickle when he would take me out. Oh, I get so mad. I get so maybe 42 whatever against Youngstown State, and I'd be so upset coming out of the game. But seeing how violent this game is from this perspective, now you have to say, hey, okay, not only within games can we keep guys fresh, right? But can we do that so that when you get to the last few games of the season that act, that are the big ones, right, the ones that you're judged off of, when you get to the game, are we healthier? And I think that's it's kind of a both a both end, right? Um, so. I feel confident with five guys, and, and that's going to be week to week. You know what I mean? Like, these guys know, I think, honestly, who starts should be week to week. If you 
display during the week of practice that you're locked in and if somebody else has a bad mental week, well, I can't reward you with starting if you have six mental errors during the week, you know what I mean, just because you started last week. So I think it's got to be that iron sharpens iron, constant competition through the whole fall. That doesn't sound like something James Miller and I just would have enjoyed as a player, kind of as you, as you just alluded to, but is that part of which is what has to drive you then? Was it, was it driving you then? You just assumed that was kind of the case when you played anyway. You I, I always felt when I was here that they were trying to out-recruit me, which is the reality, right? Yeah. Which is why it prepares you so well for the National Football League. That's why Ohio State prepares you so well for the league because now it's like they're trying to outdraft you. And so I use that as fuel, but I also saw it firsthand. You know, like there was a season where it was John Kerr, Marcus Freeman, certain guys rotating week to week. And so I saw, like, shoot, if it could happen to them, it could happen to me. So I just tried to be a certain way in practice. Like, I tell the guys all the time, you have to control the things that take no talent. You have to eliminate all loafs. Like, if, if, you, if you loaf on the field, you're a traitor. Like, you should just go play for the other team. Like, that can't – you can't be coaching effort. And then you can't have mental errors. Because if you have a mental error, then, then he can't trust you. So those were the two things that I always, as a player, was like, all right, you're not going to catch me loafing, and you're definitely not going to catch me not knowing what I'm supposed to do. I might get beat, and that's, that's inevitable. It's football. Everyone's on scholarship, right? So those two things you can control every single day. What's the next step in Sonnen's transition I think it's just seeing, you know, we haven't we haven't done um, like any live periods, you know what I mean? So we know he can tackle and all that, but I think it's just the it's the repetitive grind of the football game from in the box, the constant and he's been he's been willing so far, you know what I mean, as far as his hand placement has been good. He's been rolling the strike, he's tough. So it's just continuing to to have him challenge to there's plays right now where he's seeing it for the first time from a Will Backer. So the next time he sees it, maybe a throw, catch, tackle, is that's an interception. You know what I mean? Because he's seen it before from that perspective. Everything he's seen before this has been from top down, off the shelf, right? And so now it's dropping back, settling, driving. So he's made great progress, and um, I'm really happy with, with how Sonny's done. James, looking at recruiting, uh, it seems like it's going really well for you. Obviously, you can't talk about specific recruits, but just overall, how do you feel like that's going, and uh, are you enjoying the recruiting? I am. I, I am enjoying it. I think it's it's fun to, to build relationships and get to know so many different types of kids, you know. Um, Ohio State presents opportunity, right, in so many different ways. You're not going to get developed um, better anywhere else in the country. We have the largest fan base, the largest alumni. I mean, it's just opportunity everywhere, right? So you try to just explore, like explain your passion for the school that did so much for you, you know, especially being an out-of-state kid, not being from Ohio and then realizing how much Ohio State changed my life. And so now you communicate that to other young kids who kind of see it and you try to tell them the vision, like where you can get to. And I think the fun thing for me is that most of the kids I'm recruiting are way more athletic than I ever was. <laughs> so it's like, I tell them if I can, the only way I survived in the NFL eight years was the fact that I had football intelligence, like I knew where I was going. You know what I mean? I knew where I was fitting. And so now if I can impart that information on kids who are extremely athletic, well, now you're, now you got something special. You know what I mean? How much are you guys as a staff already talking about the long season? Well, I think, yeah, you're going to have to have depth. Because that's just the reality, right? It's, it's a longer season. There's more games. And there's no excuse at a place like here. Like, if you're, oh, I'm playing with a, Maybe a guy who was third or fourth, it doesn't matter. You know, like you got to be ready to go. So I think depth is is crucial at all of our positions um, because injuries are going to happen. They're just part of football. You know, you never want to wish it upon anyone, and you're, and you're certainly not. But it's just you can't be naive to think that you're just going to have every single starter healthy for the whole season. You talked about your mentality as a player. And you're recruiting different players than you were. How do you? Um, how do you marry that when they may not have the same mentality that you need it, but you want them to have it? Well, you, you figure that out when you get to know them. And there are certainly some kids that you start to recruit to where you see, like, you know what? Ohio State might be too big. It might be too big for them. You know what I mean? And so it's not for everybody. You have to want to come in and compete against the best and realize that you have to win every single game and be the best in the world at what you do. That's the expectations at Ohio State. And that's certainly not for everyone, and that's okay. But you have to, through the process, kind of find out who has that mentality, who really craves football. 
You know, like who craves football versus a lot of the other fluff that come kind of comes with it? Who craves ball? Because if they crave football, then the other stuff will take care of itself, right? And we'll just keep getting better and better and better if they want to be the best. You notice that during recruiting? Two more yeah, that's. I mean, that's. I think that's your job as a recruiter is you got to figure out what's the mindset of the kid, and are they are they serious about football? And you have to talk to the people that are around them, and you got to figure out talk to coaches. You just got to try to figure out like who loves ball. And the NFL, they do the same thing, right? Now they're just handing you massive amounts of money, and they're saying, okay, we're going to get this person money. Does it change their motivation, or they still love ball? So now, I mean, in college, it's the same thing. Like, who who actually wants to be the best, or who's just likes the attention that comes with playing football? James, I apologize if you already talked about it, but can you detail a little bit of the elevation from Arvell from end of last season? Obviously, missed some time last year with the injury, but where he's at now versus the expectation that you had coming into spring? Arvell's, I mean, shown a lot of progress, you know, most most importantly, you know, mentally with the playbook and everything. I think Arvell, last year there was a couple things, right? Because of, of injuries on the D-line in camp, you know, he moved to end for a little bit and then we brought him off the ball and then he had an injury and he kind of missed some time. He wasn't an early uh, mid-year, you know, so he comes in right in the summer and so he misses some reps there. So to see where he's at right now is extremely impressive. And for a guy of that size and that much power and his ability to run, he's a he's a special athlete. And so um, Arvell's had a good spring. He's got to continue to dive into the playbook and got to continue to, to learn all the little things. And as you go, right, like week one, week two, you start seeing new schemes, new schemes, things build, and it, and it becomes kind of a lot. He's just got to continue to comb through it all because athletically, you know, he's one of the most gifted guys that we have in the room. No, I think I think it still comes down for the most part. Like NIL is certainly a, an aspect for some. Um, so for some, it's going to be the most important thing. It's always a factor, but I think you still just need to find out who are the kids that love football and they want to be developed. And it's about the relationship to an extent. Like a relationship gets you to the final stretch. For some kids, NIL might be the thing that pushes them over the top. I mean, I don't know. Like every kid is so different, right? I try to view it as you're just building relationships and are you going to get a young man to trust you to develop them into not only the player that they want to be, but the person that they want to be in the future? Can you convince mom and dad that you're the right person to to do that? You know what I mean? So I think one of the things that is helpful is, is my playing experience. I think, you know, when you've played and you've done it and the drills that you're doing, you're, you know that they work. You're not going to waste your time on stuff that doesn't work. Um, and then the fact that, you know, I, I'm blessed to be at my alma mater, you know, so there's no, there's no sense of trying to leave here. You know what I mean? That's a question I get a ton is, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm like, where I'm sitting? It's my alma mater. You know, my, my, uh, my kids love it in Columbus, obviously. Uh, I love Ohio State, so I think those are things that can kind of be an advantage. Yeah, it's awesome, baby. I, I love it because it gives you an opportunity to coach the, the whole team. You know what I mean? Like special teams is a spot where the whole team, probably minus the quarterbacks, right, is, is all in one team room, in one meeting room. So you get to actually directly impact other positions than just your own. And I think it also gives, it gives a little bit of urgency to your own room. Like when you're in there every single time, you better be making an impact on punt if you're a linebacker. You better be making an impact on kick return or on uh, kickoff, kickoff return, punt return, all those things. You better be making an impact, right? Because your coach is in there all the time. So it's been nice. And, and there's a lot of stuff that I think um, our coaches have done to kind of push that, that sense of team when you're in special teams, that we, every position matters. I'm curious, if someone has been in the NFL, what do you think what the NFL is doing for kickoffs now? And do you think that's like that could be good for college? I mean... The thing that stinks is it takes away like the surprise onside, you know what I mean? But all these rules are changing so much for the safety of the game, and I mean, I, I think it's only a matter of time before it trickles down. It seems like everything trickles down, so we'll see. As of right now, we'll we'll keep things going the the way they are. All right, James. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys.